Hi everyone, welcome back to Live Darts TV as we enter the business end of what has been an unconventional season. But one thing remains the same, the start of October means the Boyle Sports World Grand Prix takes centre stage as 32 of the world's top players compete in the season's one and only double start tournament. This year, the Grand Prix heads to the Rico Arena in Coventry behind closed doors, same as the Premier League, and it's marking the first time in 20 years that the prestigious major has been held outside of its spiritual home in Dublin. The criteria and format, however, remain the same, with the top 16 from the main order of merit, joined by the next 16 highest ranked players from the Pro Tour order of merit. One difference to the world match play, for example, though, is that only the top eight players are seeded in the draw. That's made for some mouth-watering first round ties, so let's run you through some of those now. So here's a look at the draw and schedule of play, and as you can see, the first round ties are split across the opening two nights. And in a cutthroat format, best of just three sets, so it's all about who can get out the blocks quickly and avoid becoming bogged down on the starting doubles, really. The curtain raiser on Tuesday is between Adrian Lewis, a runner-up in Dublin a decade ago, and he's taking on Chris Doby, who enjoyed a fine run to the semi-finals last year. AD faced a nervous wait on Sunday to see whether he'd done enough to qualify, but uh, Johnny Clayton's defeat in the German Championship final meant that Jackpot held on to the 16th and final spot via the main order of merit. Also on the opening night, two of six debutants in the field go head-to-head as man of the hour Devin Peterson faces Portugal's number one, Jose de Sousa. We'll come on to Devon a little bit later in the preview, but what a season it's been for that man, and can he continue it over the next week or so? James Wade is one of only three players to have lifted this trophy on more than one occasion, and he starts out against 2012 runner-up Mervyn King, and that'll be the 50th meeting between those two stalwarts of the spot. And how about that for a first-round tie? World number five against world number nine, Rob Cross against Gary Anderson, a match that could quite easily be the final on any, any other occasion, the, like various others in this event, and that's due to the eight seeds as opposed to the normal 16. And the same could also be said for Michael Van Gogh versus Christoph Ratajski. Can the reigning and five-time champion avoid an early exit against the formidable Pole, who will certainly relish the chance to take on the world number one and defending champion over this short format and given his opponent's uh, inconsistent form over the last few months, let's say. Michael Smith, who's looking to surpass round two of this event for the first time. He's got a tricky opener against world match play champion Dimitri Vandenberg. How will the Belgian handle the new weight of expectation as a major champion? A tag which Michael Smith is continuing to chase himself. Wednesday's highlights include 2013 finalist Dave Chisnell against Glenn Durrant, who made it to the semis on his debut last year. He'll be looking to go one better this time. Daryl Gurney, who knows what it takes to go all the way in this event. He did so at the City West three years ago. He faces Joe Cullen. World champion Peter Wright has got debutant Ryan Joyce, who won in the summer series earlier this year. And uh, world number three, Gerwin Price, is, is looking to continue his sensational season. Remember, he was 17 games unbeaten prior to the German Championship last weekend. He starts out against Dutchman Jermaine Watamina. And the final tie of the first round could be a cracker as well. Premier League semi-finalist Nathan Aspinall against German number two, Gabriel Clemens. Let's now run you through the outright odds, courtesy of title sponsors Boyle Sports. And from the top, well, look at that price on Michael Van Gogh. Four to one, you'd have to go back some way to find MVG at such long odds for a PDC major before a dart has been thrown. But that's reflective in not only his inconsistent form over the last few months and dented confidence, but a first round tie against the inflappable Christopher Tyski, which would then be followed by a meeting against either Devin Peterson or Jose de Sousa if he were to come through that. Will he stick with his old darts or will he go back to his win mouse setup? Well, I would expect him to use the old faithfuls again, but I'm not sure if even 4-1 to one could tempt me at the moment because he does seem to be very hit and miss. But one thing's for sure, if he puts a statement down against Ratajski, that price will not last long. Peter Wright and Gerwin Price follow in the market at 11-2 to two apiece. Wright was a runner-up in 2018 and will fancy his chances of going one better. Price, a bit like the world match play, hasn't got the best of records in this event, just one quarter final. But he does look to have a decent passage to the quarters this year. And given the form he's shown over the last month or so, that 11-2, to two, could certainly give you a good run for your money. Gary Anderson hasn't thrown a dart since the Premier League. Remember, he missed the Autumn Series and the World Series finals. He's 10-1 to 1 in the market. Could be a little bit of a blind punt. Will he come in refreshed or will he be a little bit rusty? Nathan Aspinall, former UK Open champion, uh, who is at the bottom sec- is situated in the bottom section of the draw, uh, which also houses Gerwin Price. He follows at 11-1. to 1. In terms of each-way value, well, many will be looking at Big Devon Peterson, 33-1. to 1. However, he would have to beat De Sousa and then uh, it would be MVG or Christopher Tyski just to reach the quarterfinals. So that's going to be a big ask in his, his debut campaign, even for a man in such red-hot form. 
the scoring's been out of this world, but in this event, it's all about the doubles. And I mean, if you can get those right, well, who's to say you can't go, give this a real go and potentially go all the way? Glenn Durant's outright prices has just started to creep in a little bit of late. He's generally around the 20 to 25 to 1 mark uh, at the beginning of the year and towards the back end of last year, but he comes into this event at 14 to 1. So the bookies fearing does her a little bit, you would have to say. And uh, certainly, there's no reason why they shouldn't. I mean, he reached the semi finals last year on his debut, as we've mentioned. And he said himself, if there's one major he really fancies himself in, it's this one. We know he's a prolific finisher and he'll certainly give you a good run for your money. He always does. He's got a tough first game against Dave Chisnell and then it would, could potentially be Peter Wright or his fellow uh, North East thrower, Ryan Joyce. So it's going to be a big task for Glenn, but one he's uh, certainly more than capable of pulling off. Further down the list, well, Danny Nopper is one that really interests me. He qualified as the second highest uh, ranked player on the Pro Tour Road of Merit. Uh, reached the semi-finals on the Euro Tour last weekend and produced some big averages along the way. I just think 80 to 1 could be a little uh, decent good value bet each way. Uh, it's got Ryan Searle in round one and then potentially Rob Cross, who's not in the best of form or hasn't been this year, and Gary Anderson, who, as we've mentioned, um, has gone a month without throwing a dart in anger, really. So it's anyone's guess as to which Anderson could turn up. So Danny Nopper, 80 to 1, might be worth a little each way punt. So here's a look ahead to some of the standout first-round ties. And first of all, the clash of the debutants as Devin Peterson takes on Jose de Sousa. Now, these two players have had a fantastic season on the circuit and will be determined to transfer that onto the big stage. They first actually met in the prelim round of the World Championship back in 2012. And uh, it's fair to say it wasn't a game to remember. Devin won 4-3 in legs with an 83 average to de Sousa's 75. But incredible to think how far they've come since then. And it's actually one of the standout ties of the opening round in the World Grand Prix. Peterson, you'd have to say without doubt, the most improved player on the circuit this season. He comes into this event top-ranked on the Pro Tour Order of Merit, and that's largely thanks to his run to the final in the Autumn Series, which he backed up uh, on the Euro Tour by winning the German Championship for his first PDC ranking title. The popular South African has been registering ton plus averages for fun over the last few months, and he'll come into this event full of confidence, but the major test, as we've mentioned before, is his double hitting. And if you can combine the two, the scoring and the doubles, then you know he's going to take some stopping based on what we've seen of late. Uh, D'Souza making it, also making his first appearance in this event, uh, flying the flag for Portugal. He finished third on the Pro Tour Order of Merit. And uh, we all know what a formidable floor player he is. But for me, he still hasn't quite done himself justice on the TV stage. And, and in fact, he's only won one game in seven previous televised tournament appearances. And that's something to be desperate to improve on in the coming months if he's to, to make real inroads in the rankings and push on towards the top 32. And the prize for the winner of that match is a showdown against either Michael Van Gogh or Christopher Tyski. What a match that promises to be. A defending champion against one of the most consistently dangerous performers on the circuit. So it's fair to say all eyes are going to be on MVG in this one. We know his record in the Grand Prix is superb, but this is a different MVG that comes into this this year than, than what has done in recent years. He's reached the final in six of his last eight appearances. And remember... This is the event that essentially launched his career in 2012 when he beat Mervyn King in the final in Dublin for his first major title. The rest is history, but this is, seems to be a different phase of MVG's career and it's a massive test of his resolve. His confidence isn't too high at the moment. It's, it's pretty fragile and Ratajski, you, you sense, will really fancy the job in this one. MVG hasn't, you know, like I say, he's got a great record, but he has lost in the first round recently. Big John Henderson pulled off the upset. And in this cutthroat format, best of three sets, if he doesn't take the first set, he's going to be really up against it against Ratajski, who has such a fantastic temperament and is usually so effective on the doubles. It seems to be one step forward, two steps back for MVG at the moment. I mean, just when you think he's going to spark back into his brilliant best, he'll throw, you know, the follow-up with a 93 average, and we're just not used to seeing that from him. I think he's, that's, that's the main difference at the moment. His B game just isn't to the level that we're used to seeing. And Ratajski, you know, can jump all over that. Ratajski lost in the first round to Durant on his debut last year, but similarly to D'Souza, for me, he hasn't really threatened in a big major yet, you know, despite being well-established in the top 16. I mean, we saw him reach the, the quarterfinals of the world match play. He'd be looking to press on from that and start staking a claim for these big titles now. But a win over MVG, that could provide, you know, the perfect platform and he might just be good value. I mean, two to one to come through. He's, he's got to be the value of the two players here. Two of the sport's most gifted young natural talents go head-to-head -head as world number four Michael Smith faces world number 11 Dimitri Vandenberg. Smith's looking to avoid a fourth first-round exit in this competition in his last five appearances. And incredibly, he's never made it beyond the last 16 stage. Uh, we saw him hit more 180s than any other player in the Premier League, but crucially, it was missed doubles that proves his downfalls. He missed out on a place in the playoffs. 
He did reach the quarterfinals of the World Series finals, losing out to Rob Cross. But he certainly got a tough opener here against the rising young Belgian who we saw enjoyed his finest hour in the world match play, uh, which was also held behind closed doors in Milton Keynes back in July. Since then, well, Dimmy's had to contend with a nightmare knee injury sustained on a day out with his family. And that forced him to wear a knee brace during the Autumn Series. And it's actually my understanding that he's still awaiting surgery. So he could potentially be playing through the pain barrier here. Time will tell on that one. He averaged just 85 in a first round defeat to Glenn Durant in the World Series Finals and now has to contend with the added weight of expectation on his shoulders as a major champion. So it'll be interesting to see how Dimmy fares and the winner of that match will face either Mensa Sulevich or debutant Dirk van Dijvenbode. Two Premier League players going head-to-head. It was a draw that, again, jumped off the page when, uh, when the draw was made last week. Rob Cross taking on Gary Anderson, Cross the, the number five seed and Anderson the uh, unseeded player of the two. Cross making only his fourth appearance in the Grand Prix. He's actually only ever won one game, and that was last year against Mensah Sulevic before he lost out to Glenn Durant in the last 16. So Cross uh, will be looking for a strong run. Anderson, we've mentioned, hasn't uh, played competitively since the Premier League. Uh, we know he, recently he does like to dip in and out of the sport. Um, it just kind of fits it around his own personal schedule. So he likes to go fishing and, and just chill out. So who knows how much practice Anderson has done in preparation for this event. Uh, but I'm assuming the practice he has done will have been on doubles. Cross, we saw, uh, reached the final of the World Series finals, which is a much-needed run to boost his confidence after relegation from the Premier League. But one interesting thing to note is the head-to-head record between these two players. Uh, Anderson has actually won nine of their ten previous meetings, which is quite staggering, really, given uh, the close proximity of the two in the world ranking. But this will be their first uh, encounter in the Grand Prix. And a repeat of the semi-final last year at the City West in Dublin sees Dave Chisnell take on Glenn Durant. Chizzy ran out a four sets to one winner against Duzza uh, 12 months ago uh, to reach his second Grand Prix final, which resulted in defeat to Michael Van Gogh. And remember, he was uh, famously whitewashed by Phil Taylor in 2013 as well. So Chizzy still pushing for that elusive uh, first PDC major, as is Glenn Durant. Uh, Glenn coming up to the completion of his first two years as a PDC tour card holder and what a two years it's been. Um, but he's also looking to reach his first PDC major final. And as we mentioned, Duzza said himself, this event is one he's really targeting um, with the double start. He's such a prolific finisher under pressure. Um, it comes up against the formidable scoring power of Chizzy. You know, you, you think of Chizzy as that heavy hitter, but to reach two Grand Prix finals in the space of seven years is, is no mean feat, really. So he has got a pedigree in this event. One other thing to mention with Glenn, he's, he's actually eyeing a place in the Grand Slam as well. Um, we, we saw him mention on Twitter, actually, um, that the Grand Slam final this year coincides with his 50th birthday and he hasn't actually secured his qualification yet so he could uh, theoretically do it by reaching the final or winning this event which is another uh, incentive for the Seasider. When you look at Glenn's record in PDC ranked majors it just makes for such consistent reading you know semis of the match play twice, uh, Grand Prix semis last year, Grand Slam semis last November so he really is looking to take that next step further and um you know, he just seems to be going from strength to strength. We mentioned the bookies keep shortening his odds. Uh, Premier League table topper. He just loves the big occasion. And, you know, he does actually quite like playing behind closed doors as well. You know, he's mentioned that, you know, it's an environment that he's become comfortable with. And that could stand him in good stead, you know, if he can pick up from where he left off in the Premier League. So that concludes our preview for this year's Boyle Sports World Grand Prix. It promises to be a, a fascinating week in Coventry. The double start format always sets this tournament apart and has provided so many memorable moments down the years. And we saw a surprise winner of the World Match Play, so will we see another here? Leave your predictions in the comments. Who do you think is going to win? Where the upset's going to come from? And which players will you be supporting? Let us know. And don't forget to follow us across all social media platforms for unrivaled coverage of the Ball Sports World Grand Prix. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>